Hey everyone, in this video, I wanna give you a simple procedure for creating compelling compositions. Make sure that you're not making some of the same mistakes that I did when I first started out. If you wanna learn more, check out the link below. All right, let's go. You guessed it, the first tip is about tripods. Don't go setting the tripod up straight away. Please, whatever you do. The most important thing is being an observer. If you go getting that tripod set up straight away, you're gonna get lazy and start to look for compositions that suit the tripod. Settle for something subpar. So let's get down to the location now and start to have a look. And I'm gonna share with you a couple more things that I did early on, which makes me kind of cringe when I think about it. As you're being an observer, you need to establish what the main subject is. First and foremost, we're still not worried about composition yet. We just wanna know what is this photo about? What is the subject matter? Then we build the composition around that. So looking around the environment, there's quite a few elements, some mountain ranges in the back. Over this direction though is quite a prominent peak. It's Mount Titaroa. I think that's gonna make a good subject. Now, what I would not have done early on was consider what focal length may work best to do that mountain justice. You know what I would have done? I would have had the wide angle on already. I would have been set up on the tripod and I probably would have been right there with filter on doing a long exposure. I wouldn't have even been thinking. It would have been like autopilot, straight there doing the same repetitive image over and over. Now, I know you've been there. I know you yourself has probably done this before. 10 stop ND filter, smooth it all out and then just shoot that same thing over and over. Photography needs to come from having the experience out here first. So we've got that main subject. We ask ourselves now, this is your next point, what is the best focal length to use? How am I going to showcase that main subject? We're not even thinking about composition yet. What's the focal length we're working with? Then we will get on the composition. That mountain's quite far away from here and it's not the biggest peak either. I'm telling you now, it's 16 mil, that's gonna look tiny. I don't think I need the wide angle at all. I'm thinking mid-range zoom. So we've got the main subject matter. I've got the lens, which I think will do the job. Now, what do we do? We start to think about composition. Walk away from the main subject. Add layers in order to create depth in your image. The main subject is our mountain. We could just zoom in and shoot the mountain itself. Be quite a simple image, particularly without any atmosphere back there. We can add a layer in the mid-ground by having the lake. We can then have the rock. We can also have shoreline. That's great, multiple layers. But what if we add even more? Well, let's check it out. So as we start to come back further, we've got the rushes now with the mountain, lake and rock. Now we've got this tree as well. And even this tree, if we go wide enough on the lens. Multiple layers to create a sense of depth and three-dimensionality. Back in the day, I wouldn't have done that. I would have been right on the front there, like a moth to a flame, straight to that peak, straight to the shoreline. Take the time to look behind you, walk backwards, and incorporate more layers. We wanna make sure that we've got the light in the background where our main subject is, and not screaming at us in the foreground. So my next tip is to utilize dark edges in order to draw the eye through the image to the background where the main subject. So I need to find somewhere in the shade or simply wait until that sun gets a little bit lower. That's what we've got here now. We're somewhat in the shade down the bottom. We've got the light back here. We can get a sun star. We've got the light in the sky too. It's gonna lead the eye. So utilize darkness to make the light more pronounced. Something else I used to do, once I found the general composition, I would sit here and shoot 100 frames. I would just keep shooting over and over, waiting for the light to change. What I do these days is I keep moving. Don't just settle on the one composition. There could be a better shot just a few meters that way, or down here or over there. Keep moving. You might surprise yourself and find something that you like even more. And if not, return to that original spot. You just kind of keep it in the memory bank. I found a similar opening here. We've got the trees with the peak in the back, some great little flowers down below. All right, it's now time to put into practice everything we've spoken about. The light is just beautiful right now. We've got the main subject in it in the background. We've established that. The next thing I did was decide, well, what focal length might work best? I've taken the time to look at the surrounding environment and I've decided I wanna include the rushes, the flowers and the trees, as well as the rocks in the lake. I'm creating multiple layers here to give that three dimensionality and depth. Now I simply come back. I'm making sure that I have dark edges so I don't have that hard harsh light hitting the foreground and I've got a clear opening through these trees. The trees are balancing out the frame and the eyes getting directed straight towards that mountain.
All right, not the most groundbreaking image, but if you look at my portfolio, you'll see that that theory applies time and time again. So I trust that if you incorporate this into your workflow moving forward, you're gonna get solid results. And most importantly, just enjoy the whole creative process that little bit more. Thanks for viewing the video. I'll see you in the next one.